If you're a permanent resident in Toronto or you're currently in the process of obtaining your PR status, this video is for you. I'm going to break down the three most important components that you need to take into consideration as a new permanent resident before you purchase your first home in Toronto. If you're new to the Canadian Real Estate Channel, then welcome. And if you've been here before, then welcome back. My name's Emma, and I run a real estate team in Toronto called Monstera, and we help millennials purchase their first home and strategically transition into their forever home. So let's hop into the video, and I'm going to explain the three things that you need to take into consideration as a new permanent resident in Toronto before you purchase your first home. So before we even get into these three important components, there's one disclaimer and one overarching thing that you do need to take into consideration. And as of January 1st, 2023, the government of Canada put a ban on real estate purchases for non-residents. So there used to be a, a tax, an additional tax if you were a non-resident um, in order to purchase in Canada. But for these next two years from 2023 to 2025, there is a ban for non-residents. So what I would urge you to do before you even dive deep into these three things is to speak with a lawyer and ensure that you do have the right status in order to be able to purchase in Canada. All right, so that's a quick disclaimer. And now let's hop into three most important things to take into consideration once you have the proper status to be able to purchase. So the first thing you wanna take into consideration is location, and there's two reasons for this. You wanna get a better understanding of, is this a particular neighborhood that you're gonna purchase in to plant some roots and live long term? So if you've got kids or if you're planning on having kids, are the school districts great? Do you have the availability to commute to work in an easy fashion or within a comfortable time frame? And is this going to be a place that you want to plant roots and live long term? Or the second thing is, are we purchasing in an area where we don't necessarily see ourselves living forever, but we do see this as an area of opportunity to build some equity because we believe in the growth of this neighborhood. So that's one of the things that you do wanna take into consideration as you're making these plans and thinking about your entire real estate purchase or your entire real estate journey is, do we wanna buy one property and stay in this location for a long period of time? Or are we looking for something that is going to be able to help us build equity, appreciate more quickly so that we can transition into the dream neighborhood for wherever we want to plant roots longer term. So make sure that you're doing some research on the particular neighborhoods before just making a purchase on the house itself. So number one is doing as much research on the location and purchasing based on your long-term goals. So the second thing that you need to take into consideration is your credit score. And what I've seen in the past is this become a little bit of an afterthought. So putting the documentation into process for getting your PR status and then forgetting about how important the credit score is when we're trying to obtain financing for this house. And so I've had a lot of new permanent residents call me and say, hey, look, it's amazing. We just got our status recognition. However, when they go to actually get the pre-approval, the bank says, you know what? This is great. You've got everything you need except you don't have any credit history. And when it comes to mortgage lending in Canada, we are very strict, right? And the bank wants to make sure that they know that you are credit worthy and that you have the ability to be able to repay this loan. And the way that they're able to verify that is by making sure that you've done that in the past with other credit products. So that could be a credit card, that could be a line of credit, uh, it could be you know, an auto loan. So one of the things that I would say to take into consideration, especially if you don't have your PR status yet, is what can you do to actually start to build up that credit history so that by the time your status comes through and you go to the bank to get your pre-approval, you already have an established line of credit to be able to show them, hey, look, I've borrowed this money and I've paid it back. I've borrowed this money and I've paid it back. And you're increasing your likelihood of being able to get approved at the best possible rates. So at this point in time, we've discussed your location. And the second thing that we've discussed is building up that credit history to help give yourself the best possibility of getting the best rates and getting approved for your mortgage. 
So the third thing that you need to take into consideration would be space and accessibility for accommodation for any of your family and friends that might want to come and stay for a prolonged period of time. I know if I moved to another country, my family and friends would want to come and stay, and typically it wouldn't be for a couple days. They may want to stay for a month or two with me. And so one of the things that I've seen our clients kind of battle with a little bit in the past is shouldering the cost to accommodate family and friends when they come over to stay for a prolonged period of time. And so there are kind of two avenues that I see here. One is the condo avenue. So if you're thinking about purchasing a condo, let's say downtown Toronto, and at this point in time, you can only qualify for a one bedroom, it might be a little bit tight to host, you know, a couple of friends and a couple family members in a one bedroom condo comfortably. So are, is there a way that we could find a condo that has guest suites that they may be able to rent or that you may be able to rent for them to make sure that everybody has their privacy, that it's very comfortable. The second thing would be if we're purchasing a freehold property, meaning you know a detached or semi-detached house that doesn't have any condo fees associated, it's not necessarily a high-rise building, um, is there a way that we can get you an extra bedroom or is there a way that we may be able to get you a secondary suite in the basement that you know, when your family and friends aren't here, maybe we can rent it out for some supplemental income. And when your family and friends are here, maybe they can have their own separate suite if they're staying for a couple of months. And it's super comfortable for them. You have access to hang out with them all the time, but both of you guys have the opportunity for privacy. So again, there are three super important things to take into consideration as a new permanent resident or as somebody who is currently in the process of obtaining the PR. And that is the location, scoping out locations and getting really comfortable with it to understand are we willing to stay here long term or is this going to be a short term play for us to build some equity and then trade up and transition later the second thing would be building that credit history so that we can make sure that you are getting the best rates and able to qualify with a great lender and the third thing is taking into consideration the space and accommodation for any family and friends that may want to come visit you. If you are in the process and have any questions about what happens next, there is a link in the description below to book a call with my team. and We'll be happy to discuss the overall buying process to make sure that you are doing it the right way. Again, my name is Emma. I run a real estate team in Toronto called Monstera. If you'd like to get in contact with me, book a call in the description below and I'll see you guys in the next one.